Welcome to the Refold Roundtable podcast, where we talk about what you choose for us to talk about. So t this week, we actually have a really cool topic, uh, one that I'm excited about. It is all things translate. No, actually, it's original versus translated. So we'll be comparing and contrasting original content with translated content, the benefits, the minuses of both. Pros and cons. I'm excited. Ups and downs. I'm excited for this one. Lefts and rights. But we're going to fight, too, because we have two very opposing teams here. Mm. Do we? Yeah, we do. I guess we kind of uh, do, yeah. So who's on who's on team translated content? Who is on team uh, native-only content? Um, I think it's me and Briz versus you two. Yeah, so let's go. That's actually <laughs> tough. I actually do not mind uh, translated content when it's done well. But you're very much you a, ch a champion of... Native content, especially like internet stuff, right? Yeah, I'm a big fan of original internet fiction. Um, it's one of those hills that I will die on that I feel like original internet fiction is just good. I don't know. It's culturally relevant. You have all the cool benefits and it's usually like amateurish. So you don't have to worry about like big words that you're not going to understand as a beginner or uh, an intermediate. I guess I am team native content only. Get your dubs out of here. Wow. I'm going to fight you this episode. I'm excited. <laughs> some, we're, we're enemies this time. <laughs> oh, okay, just for this episode. Yeah. Hmm. I'm glad I get well, on, on Briz's team this time. Hmm. Yeah, it's good. You, you'd be glad that you're on my team. I'm yeah. <laughs> well, I'm uh, obviously I am team... I'm I'm pro translations. I think that they're great. I like dubs. I'm not anti-native content. I just consume a lot of translated content um, because I find it interesting, and I have very specific interests. And often, uh, what I find is translated, and I like it. What about you, Ben? Um, yeah, I mostly so most of my reading, almost I think almost all my reading has been translated content, um, and one book I read was, I thought was translated, but I think it just took place in the U.S., but was from a Spanish author. I Still uh, unclear on that. Um, it did not feel super native, other than the fact that I thought it was just a good translation. But for all my reading, I really, I have a very specific domain that I read in, and I prefer it a lot because that domain tends to be written in English first. It's sort of just a domain. What that I, domain is it? It's I think mostly, we share a domain. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> epic fantasy fiction sort of things, like um, Brandon Sanderson, long sort of form um, stories with magic and monsters and things like that. Sort of the only thing I read and listen to. And a lot of that comes out of English. Not all, but a lot of it comes out of English. Um, and so then I just read the translations. But also, they're really, really good. I have no reason to go read other things necessarily. Right. Um, and yeah. Yeah, uh, I feel like this is a luxury for learning Spanish. So I've, I've hemmed and hawed on this a lot, but Filipino translations are usually really bad. Um, so they don't get translations. And when they do, they're done by some crusty old academic who is very disconnected with how the language is actually used. Um, but fan translations of things also exist. The thing I'm currently reading is um, a fan translated work that has been translated quite well. There's a couple of um, orthographical errors, like they repeat words a couple times um, where they shouldn't be. Bolo Spanish just have repeat words that should be there, um, but some are just. But it's very far and few between, and it's it's a good translation. It, it's a little bit sort of weird. It's very formal, but it's sort of also sort of the tone of the book. Yeah. Is I mean, there... native mistakes too, right? So, like the mistakes that are in there are mistakes that <laughs> that that a native would probably make too. I mean, one can argue that. I'm just a plain devil's advocate here. But I yeah, mean, yeah, makes... but mistake natives make dumb mistakes all the time. Like we just forget. I know, a word but it's or... native, right? You get confused for a native making native mistakes. No, just playing. <laughs> just just leaving out yeah. words, <laughs> spelling yeah, things wrong. Yeah, <laughs> could you imagine? You got to see us. Uh, but yeah, I, I love translations. Um, and part of the reason I really like them and maybe, you know, Gorg, George, 
um, had a, a point in that, you know, in some lang languages, they're more prevalent than others. And I feel yeah, like in Spanish sure. specifically that like doblajes y translations are um, a huge part of the culture. Um, as far as I can tell, um, there's a lot of podcasts that I follow that their entire subject matter is 90s nostalgia and a lot of the stuff that they're going over and they have a huge audience is about stuff that originally well came from america yeah or I was, english speaking countries that's dubbed in spanish yeah i was doing some poking around in the spanish river and i asked some natives uh what they kind of grew up on and a, good, a huge yeah. portion of them said that it was mostly spanish stuff but like it's very common to consume things that were originally English and then dubbed or translated right. or whatever it might be. Um, yeah. Most of them mentioned like certain uh, genres like um, telenovelas or um, famous Spanish speaking authors. But a lot of it seems to come sort of from the Spanish sphere. Um, so not necessarily country specific, but a lot of just stuff that was originally English and then translated. And then especially as you sort of you, get older and like it's it's you want to go into more specific domains it becomes a little bit more difficult even in a language of spanish to say purely spanish first sort of thing sure. i think is what sure. i've seen yeah oh, i totally get that and so on the opposing side shiki uh mm -hmm. you are learning japanese and yeah. you are a um what would you how would you define yourself a, a purist a all native content all the time a a net? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to confess uh -oh. that um, in the beginning when I was doing Japanese, this is when I was okay. stage like one and two A. Um, fun fact: I am obsessed with the Star Wars prequels. I'm a huge prequel memer for Star Wars. Prequel I memer um, obsession. <laughs> so so in the beginning, I watched um, Japanese dubs of the star wars prequels the three of them <laughs> the three okay. trilogy okay. uh in the beginning for fun to like have some sort of connection to the content because i was super familiar with it and it was like okay i know what's happening even if i don't know what they're saying i know what's happening but at the same time i wanted to talk about specifically a example of uh, i guess dubs or translations just being inferior based on your target language so i yeah. recently discovered that there is a japanese dub of the show king of the hill is there yes okay, hold up is there really <laughs> yes and i think that is a huge example of why dubs and translations just aren't they they don't really stack up because the difference like the whole reason king of the hill is funny is because of uh, the Southern American culture, like the, the whole Texans, thing. They're not, they're not like, not the South. It's like a very much a Texan show. Yeah, like, super I, Texas. I mean, the South yes. Texas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not just South, but like Texas. My beef, South. Yeah. my beef barbecue, my brisket. That's very yeah Texan. It's yeah, a Texan show. it's very Mom? Texas humor, Texas culture. Like that's the whole reason it's funny. And it's like yeah. that whole aspect is lost when you translate it to Japanese. Like it's not, sure. it's not like funny anymore. It doesn't Wasn't have the same Hank's impact. Wasn't dad really racist? Yes, Hill? yes, like extremely. He was really racist. He's extremely awful. In particular. He's just racist awful in and general. sexist. Yeah, just awful. It, the, yeah. <laughs> one of the weird off-color things. Not to go on a tangent about King of the Hill. I think he was so racist. He was actually unintentionally not racist. I think he was the only one who knew that one character was like Laotian. And oh you know, yeah, Chinese or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just, just yeah. tangent, but yeah, strange show. Strange show to be show. dubbed into Japanese. Yeah, so I think your view on dubs and translations versus native content might be somewhat influenced by your target language. It could be, Definitely. and you know, you bring up a good point in that you know you lose you lose um, cultural aspects if you're like purely um, immersing in dubbed content because. If you're watching things originally from Texas <laughs> and you're watching it in Japanese, there's going to be obviously things lost in translation. But, but I've heard that they have like a semi sort of standard way of translating sort of Texan accents into Japanese. I've heard that they often really? go for like the Osaka accent. Yeah, I read it on TV tropes or something. There's an article mm -hmm. about it. 
Interesting. Interesting. That's really cool. So but did speaking, you watch? Oh, go ahead. Have I seen it? Or yeah. Shiki? Either I've one not of seen you. it. Has I've anyone seen, seen it? Yeah, I've not seen King of the Hill in Japanese. Okay, that sounds really interesting. <laughs> I watched a scene. I watched a scene of the of the dub because it was on YouTube, and it was like this doesn't feel the same. <laughs> Crazy. I think that there can be a benefit though to some simpler dubs. Like I've I watched a dubbed version of the terminal i think uh, a couple of weeks ago in spanish and oh no, no no it was it was a dubbed version of forrest gump one of my favorite favorite movies of all time um is that grammatically correct one of my favorite my uh, we'll go with it okay it's perfect um but <laughs> it's a native the, mistake <laughs> yeah there you go the dub though was very clearly there was only like three actors that they used three voice actors but oh that kind of made it really easy to to do i mean it wasn't like it's not like a hard movie anyways and like i know it so well that i, I could have watched it in in japanese and done fine but sure. it was really nice to be able to put on the in the background and not th think about like have it have it on while i'm washing dishes or whatever and just be able to still get everything because the voices are the same it's it's very much a yes. few people and uh, like i think there's almost a benefit to that for a lot of especially beginners where audio quality and different acts, slightly different accents can throw everything off and having right. a sort of more even field or whatever to be very beneficial. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like accents vary from person to person. We were just talking about that earlier before we started recording how we all have a slightly different way of speaking. And mm -hmm. when you're first starting to learn a language, it can be, it still is overwhelming sometimes to me, um, you know, listening to a bunch of different people talking at the same time getting used to how they're talking and speaking definitely makes sense that that can make it easier. And another thing that you that you hit on and also Shiki was that a lot of times dubs are familiar to us. So if we're seeking mm -hmm. out something that's dubbed, um, it, it could be something that you've already seen. And especially in the earlier stages and in early intermediate stages of learning a language, um, Revisiting familiar content can be very good because it adds a lot of context. It makes it easier to um, embrace what we call ambiguity, the uncertainty of not knowing what every single word means, but like hopping on to the flow of the story and trying to get a grasp of what's happening without translating everything in your head and letting immersion, you know, somewhat do its work. Um, but in order for that to happen, things have to be comprehensible enough, right? And a lot of time, I think that dubs are like that. They're more comprehensible because we've seen them before. Or they're speaking much more clearly because they're voice actors and they're trained to do that. Yeah. So I think that there are some understated benefits of dubs. Um, I but call it the you... secret fourth fourth channel, right? If, oh. there's, if there's, you can see what's going on, like the visual movement, you can hear what's going on like with the words you can read what's the words but then right. the fourth one is already knowing what's going to happen or what's happening yes. can add that extra light level of comprehension omniscience right? <laughs> basically omniscience. yeah <laughs> yes. yeah that level of omniscience where you understand oh this character is now upset because she broke up with her or whatever yes yeah, you're you're that's like emerging and immer emerging immersing in 4D. That that's crazy. <laughs> Emersioning. Emersioning. Yeah, we're New word. I can native English mistakes. Well. <laughs> yeah, native <laughs> mistakes. Hashtag native mistakes. Not I'm a gonna say that one. every time. <laughs> that's our hashtag native mistake. Whenever you're immersioning yourself. <laughs> Whenever you are just be sure to apply ample sunscreen. Yeah. <laughs> sunscreen is very important. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, so we talked about some of the benefits of dubs. Let's switch it and let team anti-dubbing, anti-translated content uh, give some reasons why they think it might not be super beneficial. Let's start with Gorg. What, what do you think? What do you think could be a potential downside of of, of immersing primarily in dubs? Well, not dubs specifically, but translated Translate, content. Translated content, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so like, I don't know if you guys know this, but a very famous example of someone who was translated mm -hmm. poorly was Jules Verne, who did like all those books. 10,000 Leagues <clears> Under the Sea, ago. Around the World. Yeah. Days. Love those books, they're so good. Yeah. They were mistranslated by early, um, like the early English versions were all awful. They were sort of 
creative reinterpretations of what he actually wrote in French. And they were aimed, I think, more as kids' books rather than like proper adult novels. And there are just times that some things are translated very poorly. So someone mentioned like fan translations. I'm actually, or I was a week ago, I was reading a fan translation of a Japanese light novel in Spanish. It was good. I love the story. Japanese people make great content. But the translation just felt weird at times. It almost felt like it was machine translated. They would go back from using two versus using usted and like the same person talking to the same person. Right. And there was just a lot of signs that made me say, this is a bad translation. I don't know if I can trust it. So I definitely think with fan translated content or even professionally, like with Jules Verne, mm -hmm. the content does have a risk of just not being great linguistically. That's a really good point. Yeah, this one that I, this book I'm reading right now, there's a second way to say um, but in Spanish, which is mas, mas. without an mas. accent. And that's the only version they use here in this book. What? And that's crazy. it's the only place I've seen it in all of my immersion. Um, <laughs> like it's when I started the book, I was like, the, what is this word? Like, are they just spelling mas wrong? Nope. It's just a different word. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, yeah it's like, Spanish is a bunch of those. Yeah. Which is why Maybe they've cool. got can for dog instead of, uh, well, dog. What? Does it? But yeah. Well, I think I, can. I need to immerse more. C -A -N, C -A -N, <laughs> can. I think it's the other word for perro. And just like mas is the other word for perro, right? Is that like, I've so, never seen that word. Is that like can. French influence? Because like in French, it's chien no, it's, or something. It's No, it's the native word. I think oh. uh, perro with the two R's is actually like an innovation. But you get this a lot with like dialects or closely related languages. Mm -hmm. Like the word uh, mas for but is like standard in Portuguese. Yeah. But oh. if you don't expose yourself to Portuguese, it's going to feel kind of weird in Spanish. I do not expose myself to Portuguese. Yeah. Yet. I looked it up. Gun does in fact mean hound or dog. Interesting. It is a word. Now I want to hear from Shiki. So we got Gorg's argument. Uh, Shiki, what what do you think about um, dubs and translated content? What do you think could be a potential um, downside of, of using them? So aside from the cultural aspect being lost, depending on uh, the languages that are being translated between, um, the other thing is when you have to translate or dub something, um, you kind of have to localize things and change things to make it fit. And that can lead to weird phrasing of things or things that just kind of sound weird. Kind of like what um, Gorg was saying earlier, <laughs> where things just might sound weird. Yeah, I I'll be honest. Like, I've... I tend to be choosy with the translated content that I consume, especially reading, um, because like like y'all said, there are a lot of good translations and a lot of bad ones out there. And one of the things that I do or have done is look up what people think about the the books that I'm reading. So I'll look up, um, for example, like Brandon Sanderson, whatever book in Spanish on YouTube and see what Spanish booktube, um, see how they think of it, basically. Booktube. Yeah, booktube. It's a thing. It's a big deal. And if the book gets raving reviews, and if I can tell that, they've, that they're that they talking about the Spanish version, I'll generally consider that as a, okay, this, is na this isn't native content, but it's content translated for natives, and they're enjoying it. So it's got to be good enough to, to at least do that. Um, or, or if I'm not sure about what I want to read, I'll also look for suggestions. And a lot of time, because I, like Ben, I'm a fantasy junkie. I love fantasy. It's my favorite genre. Inject that only. fantasy into my veins. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, <laughs> I've got fantasy in my veins. Uh, <laughs> insert meme here. But, yeah, man, <laughs> it's it's tough. But, but there, if you find people that have similar interests to you in your target language that are native speakers and they're reviewing stuff that you want to do or read or consume. I think that's a really good way to kind of see what good translations are out there and kind of weed out the bad ones. If, if that makes any sense and see what people are excited about. Same thing with like anime. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge anime nerd as I think a lot of people are here 
Um, except I'm not immersing in Japanese while I watch anime. I am learning Spanish. Um, but there is a huge like anime culture in Latin America and Spain where dubs are generally king. You know, Latin American dubs are renowned for being very good. And people in Spain don't generally, I'm generalizing here, generally like things that are that are dubbed in, in their native language. So it's it's big in the culture. So even though like you're missing the cultural elements of, okay, this isn't taking place in Mexico or Spain or Peru or something, um, you're still able to talk with people that have the same interests that you're, you know, consuming the same content. Mm -hmm. And something the other interesting thing I about wanted that. To say... oh, go, oh, ahead. go ahead. I just want to say one more thing about this. Um, yeah. It, there's also something to be aware of that I just thought of it just now that you could call it the jumping in problem where it's Ooh. like, um, so if someone comes from a background of traditional learning where they're used to textbooks and teachers and all those things, they have the problem of jumping in to immersion where it's like, how can I do this if I don't understand anything? Oh no. And it's like, you could have that issue with dubs because a lot of the times well maybe not a lot of the time but at times they tend to be simplified and if you constantly immerse in dubbed content you kind of run into a similar issue where it's like you're so used to the way dubbed content is that when you try to go to actual native content you have that same issue where it's like oh wait i suddenly don't understand anything when you felt like you were understanding things before this might have happened to me. No big deal. Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't... It might still be happening with me. Everything's fine. That's one of the reasons that I, I do prefer native, um, like, visual media and, uh, like, audio media. Mm -hmm. But for, like, mm -hmm. written things and books, I much more readily want to go to um, translations because I, I haven't really noticed a huge difference. Yeah. Um, but for things like YouTube or for Netflix... I think that it's it's way better to go down the road of, of, of native stuff just because it can also like the sort of that um, element of culture or right. learning the sounds, also just getting used to things, right? How people actually speak. Because then when you go to um, other poorly or mediumly dubbed stuff later, then you, you can kind of get over it because you have a good amount of immersion of, of quote, real natural language. Um. And so I think somewhere the answer is somewhere in the middle, a little bit of both. Um, like everything is these days. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to yeah, go back to the idea good. of availability of translations and dubs and things like that. Mm. Um, because I think that's a really interesting uh, idea. Because I know in, in some languages, even widely spoken languages from rich parts of Europe, don't have a ton of dubs and, and things because people are used to reading subs or just doing the thing in English. Right. right? Some are bilingual people, trilingual <laughs> people in Europe that just... Some oh, widely just spoken English. languages have voiceovers instead of proper dubs as well. Yeah, That's German does with, that. Uh, and it's common with Russian. Russian and Polish and a few other, I guess, Eastern European cultural sphere type languages tend to have these... Uh, literal voiceovers where you can hear the original language voice actors mm -hmm. or, or actors under the target language audio and people get used that to that drives me crazy i uh, uh, it drives me nuts i can't even handle it in english because that happens we do that in english too no i it's always jarring when i see it because often it's it's very quiet and like the voiceover is fully over yeah. but like if it's like a, yeah. a documentary or something like you can usually i've seen it in documentaries where they're interviewing yeah. people mm -hmm. but I, I don't yeah. think i've ever seen it in like a fiction show yeah like a proper like this I is not in the dub. floor is really lava on on netflix i was trying to watch the spanish dub of the floor is lava the game show and they have the contestant speaking in english it's an english game show they have the contestant speaking in english very softly and then like the spanish dubs on top of it and it was i could not handle it my brain didn't know what to think it was it was a lot to do i think like if you're if you're really good at the language or really good at just like drowning things out it's probably fine but that that's where i draw the line i can't personally i can't do that can you guys handle it I don't know. I've handle? never tried to handle it. 
All right, go I, wash the floors, I lava, and then comment. <laughs> about having ADHD PI. I can barely mm. handle co-working sometimes with like with Ben and Shiki on voice chat just hanging out while we're doing work. I find it like very hard to focus yes. because I don't have good sensory gating. It's why I love my earplugs, my yeah. you know, uh Ben seen <laughs> my big industrial headphones that I have. I'm very bad picture. about it. So uh <laughs> when I hear two languages at once, my brain is just split. I don't filter it out very well. I imagine neurotypical people don't mind just because of how widespread the practice is. If it were that bad for most people, I don't think it would still be a thing. Well, I think it also has to do if it's if it's if you're a native speaker of English and the content that you're the, the original interview is in Spanish or something and then the dubs over in English, it's easier to override that versus if you're using that content for learning. And in that case, I think it's just way too confusing because your brain is already on overdrive trying to um, distinguish the vocal patterns of the new language that you're trying to learn and yeah. then adding and your you can hear original the English language. in the background. In the background, like, you're just like, I don't up, know what's going on. Up. Am I understanding this? Ah! Like, it's, it's yeah, is that the voice in my head or is that them actually speaking? Hmm. <laughs> exactly. Probably both, if my we're being honest. My voice doesn't usually sound but... this angry. <laughs> my voice... I didn't know she sounded like a 35-year-old Midwestern woman baking a cake. But yeah. Um... I do love cake. <laughs> I do. One thing I really don't think has been talked about enough is the fact that you really do miss out on cultural stuff. Yes. So Let's one talk point about in favor it. of native stuff is that there are actually like native light novels. There's uh, novelas ligeras mexicanas, which is, again, just Mexican original light novels. Right. And they even include a nice little glossary with like, um, what do they call them, the little superscript like numbers, because he does, the guy, one of the main authors for them, Jose Luis Vasquez, he references Mexican brands and uses Mexican slang. And he's cognizant of the fact that even natives from other countries aren't going to understand it. So he'll put footnotes like, oh, this is a Mexican brand of cereal, or oh, this is this. And I feel like there just is a lot of cultural information lost with a dub or a translation. I think you're absolutely right. I don't think any of the fantasy jargon that I've learned about shard blades and anger spren and all that stuff mm -hmm. really translates into <laughs> Mexican culture. And there's a lot that I miss. Um, if because I do try to immerse in native content like podcasts and and things like that, and I am just because I read so much. I there there's like. Um, What's it? What's it in English? What's the English word? Herga. Um, there's jargon slang? slang. Slang. Thank you. There's slang that I just like. I don't get. Um, and that is something that I definitely miss. Although there are some translations, like there's this book that I'm currently reading, Ciudad Meriluna, uh, book two, um, but the whole series. It's actually translated into Mexican specific Spanish, and so even though it's not about Mexico or life in Mexico or anything like that. It's it has a lot of the slang and the curse words. I'm learning a bunch of curse words that I never knew before or how to use them. Curse words in context, it's great. <laughs> but immersion works. Immersion works. Yeah, because you know, I knew what these curse words were, but like cursing is an art, like not to get in in into this. This is a topic maybe kind of spicy. Um, but like there's like, you know, ways to use those words and if you use them wrong it sounds really weird oh wait so, hang on let me I, let me age restrict this stream oh yeah <laughs> Listen, I, I didn't say any of the words i just said that there are certain words yeah. that are a little spicy <laughs> <laughs> oh this is a spicy stream but um you know i learning how to say those things because like if you say things out of order it doesn't sound right you know whenever like for example my mom she never curses so when she does she doesn't know how to do it in english and it's really funny i don't want to sound like native that. mistakes Native, it's not. It's <laughs> she's not native and cursing. <laughs> it's really bad. Uh, but yeah, um, I digress. But yeah, it's like there. I think that you can, in some translations, get some cultural elements, but you'll never get the complete picture. You know, like like you said, Gorg. Like there's a lot of stuff that you miss. Yeah, it'll also be sort of shoehorned in, or like the the translator will have to choose how to how to put something in. Like if there's mm -hmm. a a character that is given an accent that has a certain connotation, the right. translator has to choose what accent to give that person. Um, 
I actually really like that aspect often. It's part of the reason I really like um, audiobooks is the voicing of characters has to, is a choice you have to make. Um, but yeah, that can definitely be a downside as well if it's not funded well or done well, for sure. Yeah. At that definitely. point, it's more of like a localization, I guess, than a, just a, a plain translation. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about like a book that isn't really a localization, but then there's a character that in the original has a very different background from the other characters and it wants to show somehow that kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so, uh, so prepping for this topic, I've also been thinking about, um, we talk about when things are worse than the original, like with um, Jules Verne, but what about yeah. some things that are apparently better than the original? Do those exist? So they do exist. And one that I hear a lot is Avatar and Ghibli. Um, just the other week, there was an Israeli guy uh, on Refold Central on the Discord servers talking in voice chat, and I, I joined in, and he was ranting about how good the Avatar dub of uh, the sorry the Hebrew dub of Avatar was, and he was like, "Yeah, when I first heard it in English, I was disappointed. It just wasn't as good." So there's that, and Cole, also known as Hulk, is a big fan of the Cantonese Ghibli movies. He thinks they're better than the Japanese. So there are some people who really do think that some dubs are better, but I just can't talk about it personally. I've not done enough dubs or yeah. translations to really be able to, to say. Because I'm team, go to Wattpad, find some amateur <laughs> internet fiction, and have fun. I don't, I just can't, I can't get behind the translations. You're learning the language, and then you're reading something that you could already read in English. It just doesn't, doesn't do good for me. It, it doesn't hit the same. That's that's definitely for sure. There, I can't say for sure if there are things that are better dubbed than the original language. But my Spanish tutor on Italki, she swears, and this is going to be a really spicy take, but it's her take, so don't hate me for it. She thinks that the Spanish dub of Shrek, and she speaks English. Oh, it's so good. She she says that it's way better than the English one. Which is iconic. The English version is, I mean, Seth Meyers, Eddie Murphy. Like, she told me that she couldn't handle the um, Eddie Murphy as the donkey in, in the English <laughs> one. And that the Spanish one was just so much better. Shrek, with, like, all the characters were so much better. Do you think the same thing, Ben? I don't think it's necessarily better, but they're both very good. And I oh. I would, I'm not really a huge Shrek fan. I really enjoyed it. But, like, it it's like a once a year movie for me. But yeah. if I watched... Uh, the English one once a year and the Spanish one once a year, I could do that. Like I could sort of bring it down to a twice a year movie if I could watch them both. Um, yeah. But like Span Monsters, Inc. Spanish, Latin American Monsters, Inc. That one is yeah. better than the original. And that's a good movie. Um, that one's I've so I've never seen good. it. Oh my God. There's a lot I'm, of... I should watch it in Spanish. Yes. It's so <laughs> I'll watch good. It. It's so good. Okay. There's a couple <laughs> others that I... Um, the Emperor's New Groove was also really, really good in Spanish. That I believe. Um, and Ganto was not great. It wasn't. Uh, I didn't think so either. The English was, it was really good. But um, I, I originally watched it in Spanish and I tried to get into it. But then I watched the English version. I was like, ooh, the slaps. This is this is really good. But Yeah. Like uh, Coco there, also isn't really better in Spanish. It's it's like the same. The music is better. But like the dub itself is like the isn't same. Isn't it the same actors? A lot of them, yeah. Um, yeah, like so that would make portion. sense why it's very similar there are some cases uh like in terms of anime where the original japanese dub of the anime is kind of dull like dialogue wise and acting wise and when they dub it to english um it adds like personality and some spice and makes it a little more mm -hmm. yes. interesting like something that comes to mind is uh the Yu-Gi-Oh series like if you watch uh, the original Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh, like any series, like the original or GX or whatever, it's kind of dull. And uh, the English dub added some personality. And then, like, of course, I can't not mention the, like, most famous, like, controversial anime dub of Ghost Stories in English. Um, it's very... It's very late 2000s edgy humor that was okay back Aren't then. We all? Like, 
<laughs> like using the R word and, and things like that. <laughs> it's gamer spicy. vocab. Too spicy. Yeah, wow. very <laughs> gamer vocab. But like the original ghost stories dub in Japanese, dull. Very, very dull. Hmm. But uh, in English, it's hilarious. And I've said before, um, it deserves to be preserved in a museum because it's 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 a work of art. Uh, going back a sec with Yu-Gi-Oh, do you think the sort of boringness of the Yu-Gi-Oh uh, series is sort of an overreaction to the actual original Yu-Gi-Oh mm -hmm. series that didn't get brought out into English? The so-called Season Zero. Do you think that might have played a role and is like to why they it was a boring dub? I think it was because they couldn't really monetize it until the card game came out. Like, here, we have this card game. Buy our cards. And they had, like, a product to sell. So, like, doing that, like, revitalized the series in terms of, like, commercial success. But before then, it was, like, your average, like, nerdy card game. Well, not card game, but, like, nerdy shonen anime manga type thing. Uh, I don't really know what you guys are talking about, uh, to be honest. <laughs> but I'm going to jump in it's and okay. say that um, I've I've never watched an anime dubbed. Is that true? Or sorry, sub. I've never watched an anime subbed. I don't think I've only ever watched dubs. Um, watched anime at all? Yeah, I've I've watched them before. Like I've seen like the the big ones like Death Note and uh, oh okay, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and I watched B Stars, Shonen stuff. Um, yeah, oh, you watch B Stars? I saw it on Netflix, and I was like, "This, this is surprisingly like good." It's I enjoyed it, good. and I'm very a pretty good. harsh critic of things like that. Um, but they've all the the dubs have felt like as expressive as other things that I've seen in English. Yes, like you could have like for many of those, you probably could have convinced me that oh, this one was actually made in the U.S. It's an it's uh it's just animated like in in that sort of style. And I would have been like, okay, I believe you. <laughs> like, there's no point where I would have been like, hmm. Like some some Ghibli films, I have I sort of been suspicious of the of the dub, or especially of the subs. The subs have been kind of sus on the uh, Ghibli movies, but like some of the dubs have been like, that's a little weird. Um, but they're all usually quite good. And they're, so they're they're weird for sure. But they have like a, a cute, like all star casts for the for the Ghibli movies. Yeah, I've actually never looked at, looked up the. Tina Fey the was the mom in um what? Uh yeah, was Tina Fey was the mom in the one about the little fish that turns into a girl? Ponyo? Yeah, Ponyo, thank you. It's on top of my head. Huh. Uh tip of my tongue. Yeah, she's the mom. It's top and of my then, head. Um it's top of my head. Native mistake. Um <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag native mistake. <laughs> do, do not Damn. do as I say, not as I say. Um also native mistake. But do say, uh, and Liam Neeson is the, the voice of Ponyo's dad. The wow. evil sea wizard. They went off yeah. on that movie. Christian Bale is in um Howl's Moving Castle. Um who else? Like it, Wait, but really? you're right. Yes, oh, he's Howl. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. All star cast. Yeah. Yeah. In uh, Nausicaa? That Thing one? of the Wind. Yeah, yeah. Um, Patrick Stewart never remember is it, the and dad. The spelling is crazy. Patrick Stewart is the dad. So, like, it's like, but but even hmm. despite having, you know, star studded casts, the dubs, it is a little weird. It's not completely on point. I, I support that. Yeah, but Do I know that. Say, not as I say. I know that uh, Afro is a big. He talks up Spanish dubs of animes all the time, um, and a lot of people love them. There's a huge culture of Dragon Ball in Mexico and Latin America, um, yep. and so I assume that it's got to be like dubbed pretty well for people to be that into it. Um, it is. It is like it is widely renowned in Latin America and other places of the world that the latin american version of um dragon ball is superior and a hmm. lot of it has to do with like in the japanese version they keep the same voice as goku and dragon ball as in dragon ball z like the same girl playing like a grown man like with the same like high-pitched voice right uh -huh. oh yeah dragon ball z dub or uh sub is the original super weird because yeah of that. <laughs> yeah but the latin american version is a bop and there's there's not a single anime that I've watched 
um, with a Latin American dub that I've gone, man, that was awful. Or, oh, I can't get over the acting. Like, maybe it's the story that I can't get into, but I've never had, like, a Latin American dub, like, turn me off from from an anime. I watch a lot of anime. Is that a uh, character trait? Um, No. Uh, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I'm scared to know if it is, to be honest. Yeah, how, how often do you bring it up? Too much. I watch a lot of anime. There we go. Happened again. Put that on your little tally mark yeah, station. Zero days so, since workplace injury. <laughs> I mean, talking about anime. Right. I mean, it is refold. <laughs> it yeah. is a, something that kind of brings us all together. Some degree of weepness or whatever. But so for for dub content, do you think that there's like an ideal stage for, for dubs? I'd say like, towards the beginning. I think it's something that it's more it's easier to get into, especially if it's familiar. I think that idea of that jumping in problem and sort of being afraid to not understand anything, especially for people that have been studying their language for three or four years that are like, I still can't do anything in this language. Starting with something easy that you were a, a familiar with that is a little bit unnatural, but like simplified, I think is a great start. Yeah, I think I think that's a good point. I agree um, with that. And probably especially something that you maybe have already seen before, maybe not recently, but mm -hmm. in the past, so that it brings up feelings of omniscience, <laughs> as we said before. Yeah. As you it's, said It's before. not a replacement for, like, you can't just, just do translated stuff. Like, you still want to get comprehensible no. input and things that are natural and native. Yes. But, yeah, the, the, this, that sort of 4D-ness of getting the omniscience is most useful at the start when you the other three channels are a lot harder to follow. Right. And, you know, speaking of that, you know, like having, having had watched something before, um, I think for me specifically in Spanish, I had never really been into Spanish content. So there was nothing that I could really latch onto as, Oh yeah, I've seen this before, except for maybe Pan's Labyrinth or, mm -hmm. you know, like the most famous Spanish shows slash movies. Um, but in a language like Japanese, or if you're already really interested in, in the culture and have watched a lot of things before, like a lot of people that, that are learning Japanese, they don't need to do um, dub content in the beginning because they've already probably watched things in Japanese uh, translated into their native language or subbed with their own native language subtitles. And I think that, you know, like for Shiki, you probably don't even have a desire. I mean, I'm just guessing here. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but you are really interested in Japanese culture. So like the temptation to to watch translated stuff, there's so much content that you already jive with in Japanese that you don't really have that problem of like FOMO or, oh, I wish I could immerse in this, but I can't because it's in my, na in my native language. I, I should just do a translation or something like that. Yeah. I'm guessing you don't have that. Yeah, because uh, there's just so much content. And also um, what uh, Gorg was saying earlier, like... Gorg. <laughs> yes. Gorgonzola. It, like, if, if I have something that I want to watch, like, in Japanese, why would I want to just go watch something that I could just watch in English and it might be better? Like, right. why would I want to do that? <laughs> Yeah, but for 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 Gorg, he he mentioned that he really likes fan uh, not fan content but like amateur fiction. What can you say, George, to someone who is learning a language and they are having a hard time finding content that they want or dubs like in a language like Filipino? You said there's not like a huge dubbing culture, right? I think the question is also just how do you get into reading that kind of stuff or watching that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you're learning a language that is not Sp Spanish, <laughs> the Spanish <laughs> seems to be like very, they very much have a very strong translation and dubbing culture. Like Mr. Absolutely. Beast has a dub. Uh, Blippi, I don't know if you guys know Blippi. He's like crack for children. Uh, he has a Spanish dub and he's like a YouTuber, right? Like a kid's YouTuber has a Spanish dub. They just very much have a strong dubbing culture. Uh, for languages that don't have that, you kind of have to take what you're given. So if, you know, the bulk of media is sappy telenovelas with drama and melodrama, 
you kind of get into it, right? It's sort of like when you listen to a song and you hate it, but because they play it all the time, you like it by the end of the month, right? Uh, and when it comes to fan fiction, not really fan fiction, amateur internet fiction, it gives power to the people, right? It, you know, I've seen Filipino dramas. They put out an episode every day uh, a week, like seven days a week. Oh, uh, the budget is very low. The special effects are really bad, like very comically bad. Just go to Reddit and type in, you know, teleserie SFX. All right, if you want to see the pictures. But okay. with with amateur internet fiction, anybody can be a writer. Some people write from their phones. They may not have a computer. Uh, you don't need great special effects. And some write it, from it, their heart. Like there's a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of diversity in the content. Whereas like Filipino TV is mostly like the news or sappy dramas. You can get interesting fantasy, isekai, uh, horror stories. Things that you wouldn't, they wouldn't have the market or the budget for, I think. So it forces you to be creative, I think, when you're learning a language that is not Spanish with its thousand doves. Um, and that's definitely a privilege. So not everybody has that, I think, with their target language. But people who are not learning a very widely spoken language that's important, like Spanish, German, Japanese, Russian, probably in the minority when it comes to language learners i think at the yeah. end of the day though do you think that not having that kind of stuff available is a benefit or a uh the opposite of a benefit <laughs> a negative i think it's a benefit i think it's a benefit to some degree <laughs> because it forces you to really know the culture you know uh a lot of spanish learners probably don't know name brands from spanish-speaking countries that they would know if they had to read books mm. written by natives in the target language, right? There's definitely an upside to it. But ultimately, the reality is that some languages just have really good content. English content is going to be great. That's why it's dubbed. Uh, Filipino content is not great. And I don't think anyone would watch it if it were dubbed. But it is. It is dubbed. It's quite big in, like, Africa, uh, believe it or not. Africa is a really big huh. market for Filipino dramas. That's a fun mm. fact. But... Yeah, I think it's a cultural thing. Things that like we like as sort of like middle class white people it tends to be like epic fantasy, sci fi, stuff like that. Um, and I think that one, one thing I always tell myself is this media is not bad. I'm just not the target audience. I'm not a Filipino housewife. Um, you know, wait, you're not? I can't Hang hate on. it. I, I, <laughs> I'm not. You, I am been, not. You, you've really fooled me then. We've, We've been, been lied to. I'm a pro cosplayer. I'm a pro He's a pig, so, obviously. He's George yeah, Pitt. to be less cynical about some of the quote-unquote bad content, I always remind myself mm -hmm. I'm just not the target audience, right? Mm -hmm. It's true. Because I'm not. It's not for me. Right. Yeah, it's not bad content. It's just content that you're not into. It's, it, there's, it's, it's like if, if we the refill bubble for a second, people criticize us. Go to... Uh, Reddit, you'll see people like, oh, the German server. It's just people watching anime in German or natives mm -hmm. talking about anime. Uh, they would criticize us for like being kind of weeby, you, you know, or nerdy. So it's important that we don't throw shade at people who do like some of the quote unquote cringe content. Yeah, absolutely. And I was like, the way that you said it, like giving power to the people was really <laughs> inspiring. Like, honestly, like, the like writing is like you said like the great equalizer and finding content that people care about and they've written even if it's not professional um you know content that comes from the heart and comes from you know the culture that they're raised in is invaluable and now there are some me... domains that you just don't find outside of internet fiction you are like, making uh, me want to download wattpad fiction. gorg how uh, dare you do this to me that's not great don't, don't get me wrong <laughs> Listen. Uh, because there's such a low barrier of entry. Anybody with a smartphone, right? Or um, an internet connection. Or a smart There's pad, a if you will. Stuff, but you can get good at filtering. You'll know from the first page or two, I think, whether it's worth yeah. your time or not. Yeah. Do you have a strategy for and finding that content? So, like, aside I, from just, like, going to Wattpad, like, what, what strategy? I do, do not have a strategy. I usually go through, like, half a dozen things before mm -hmm. I find something that I'm, I'm really into. So that's definitely a downside. Whereas if you're dealing with mm -hmm. dubbed or translated content that you know you're going to like, 
it's more of a sure thing. You have like a I set number spend of pages. A lot more time. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely go through a lot of content. I think I've got like several hundred books that I've downloaded from Wattpad that yeah. I filtered through and just never read because they ended up being bad. Gotcha. Or with Wattpad, you run into this issue of stuff that's just never finished and it's not ever going to get finished. Sad. You don't run into that with published works. Well, so there's unless you're downside. watching Firefly and you... then it gets canceled after one season. Rip. Yeah, they aired but... it out of order. I know. Firefly's a sad story. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> Listen. You what just... about The Name of the Wind, my favorite book? <laughs> We're all just crying over here. Yeah. We can have a support session after the podcast talking about uh, it. For unfinished stories. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's really, really interesting. So do you have like a rule? So like for, for shows that I'm not sure about, I'll give it three episodes. And if I don't like it after the first You're episode. I, well, because I, I feel like you can't get into something until you've gotten three episodes. Do you have like a set number of pages? Like when you're like filtering through that content, like 10 pages, 15 pages, three pages. What What's kind of like your... It's list? more than three pages. I would say it's usually about seven pages, assuming like 300 pages. Sorry, 300 words per page. Yeah. I would say like that's enough to know whether you're going to like it. All right. That's yeah. a good strategy. One of my favorite things about reading native content, especially from amateurs, is that you can often tell where they're from. So when I read, you know, Filipino is only the native language of about 30% of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So when I read stuff in Filipino, I can say, okay, this person's from this region or, oh, this person's not a native Filipino speaker. I can tell because their grammar is a little funky or something. It's really fun. Uh, it's the same thing with Spanish, right? You can say, oh, this person's using Argentinian words. They're, right. It's just fun to kind of make guesses about the author. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I think everybody should try it. And this is not about this. This episode's not about why you should be reading amateur internet fiction. But definitely, <laughs> if you are caught in this sort of cycle of dubbed content and translated content, and you can't find good published native content, sometimes the best stuff just isn't published. Maybe it's too spicy, or maybe it's too cringy. Who knows? Give it a cringe, shot. Cringe builds fluency. I like that tagline. You should put that in your Twitter bio. <laughs> I should. I think I will. <laughs> Cringe builds Cringe. fluency. Yeah. Just learn cool languages. Easy. Don't learn lame, lame languages. No, oh, hang on now. That's <laughs> well. That's that's all, spicy. So you're saying learn any language because all languages are cool. Oh. Except for Japanese. Mm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah don't you, learn Japanese. You started this. No, kidding. Gosh, we're gonna lose <laughs> over subscribers in like <laughs> five seconds. It was a joke. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of, before we before we run out of time, we hit the clock. I do want to mention some notably bad dubs would be like when does anyone remember the Pokemon dub where they were talking about jelly donuts for rice? Yes. Balls? Yeah. No. Yeah. There are definitely some localizations that are just not good, and one of my concerns as an L two speaker, especially a beginner, is you just wouldn't know. That no, you don't. Something is wrong, right? Yeah, I didn't know jelly donuts look like that <laughs> in Japan. Rice ball <sighs> jelly donuts. Yeah, Ugh. that's how I like mine. Very interesting. <laughs> Little powdered sugar on top. Mm. Okay, I, th I think we're done at this point. <laughs> Things have just gotten totally unhinged. That was a good talk, though. <laughs> I think I've got a lot talk. to think that like the like you really have me on the edge thinking about Wattpad about about I mean I've got like tons of series that I'm I didn't reading. read it before I started language learning either it's just that, like that is the unofficial library for Filipino content you know I do again, read a lot of have a strong literary culture web so... comics like this web comics are fairly similar in that you know they there's web comics uh canvas on webtoons and there's tons of native um, comics there. And it's kind of similar and that's kind of an equalizer. The only barrier to entry is that you have to draw. But um, there's... I like those. I like the, some of my the sort favorite of series. Things. Some of my favorite series on Webtoons are native um, content that's native in Spanish, too. So, yeah. I, th I think the moral of the story, and y'all can disagree with me before we wrap things up, but the moral is don't avoid dubs they can be helpful but try to step outside of your comfort zone and find things 
that's native content that you do like and maybe you have to go off the beaten path or watch things over and over to get a taste for it but at the end of the day dubs and translations alone aren't going to take you where you want to go but they're not something that you necessarily need to avoid agree and for legal reasons my comment about cool languages was a joke just saying <laughs> okay. i believe you all languages you'll cool. be speaking to my lawyers <laughs> I'm calling HR. No. <laughs> Good. Um, well, does somebody want to, to wrap us up? Yeah. I'll let Bree sort of take us away. Yeah, she's sort of uh, been doing a baller job. Ben? Me? Oh. Baller. Ben? Me? Baller. Ben? All right. Well, thank you all for joining us for the live recording of the Refold Roundtable podcast. If you love this episode and want to hear more, you can listen to all of our past episodes on YouTube and Spotify. And if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to give us a like and leave a comment to let us know. Um, that helps us in the algorithm. And it also helps us understand what you like and what you don't like. So if you have any comments for us, please, please let us know. We read every single one. And for all of y'all listening to the live recording right now, voting is open for next week's topic. Um, give sure suggestions suggest yes please leave suggestions we want to talk about the things that you want to talk about um, so if a topic that you really wanted to hear about wasn't covered make sure you re-suggest it because we're looking at new suggestions we want to know what you want us to talk about right now so you can do that in our discord and you can join our discord at refold.la forward slash join or if you're here listening you can just do that right now Bye bye Bye. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Refold Podcast. We hope you enjoyed listening and maybe even learned something new. Projects, events, and content like this podcast are only possible thanks to our generous patrons. If you liked this and want to see more similar projects, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Visit community.refold.la slash Patreon-benefits to learn more.